I've been thinking about something. We have so many cool gadgets nowadays. iPads and laptops and smart mobile phones. So how come we can hardly ever use them at school? Who decides that we, the people are supposed to learn, can't even use the tools we're most comfortable with? Use of these gadgets is abbreviated to ICT, Information and Communication Technology. In fact, many people believe that children learn much better by using ICT, but many local authorities struggle to provide their students with this. The problem is not the actual hardware. The schools are full of it. The problem is how to use ICT smartly to improve learning. But why is better learning important? Well, Norwegians like to think they are the best. However, the truth is that even though Norway spends more money on schools than most countries, Norwegian students score average on international PISA and TIMSS tests. Why is it like that? And what are the consequences? Norway currently makes a good living from its oil. However, it could all be gone by as soon as 2030. People say that after the oil, we will live off knowledge. As far as I can see, this means that more of us will have to get a good education. But with so many of our young people dropping out of high school, can we really claim that we're on the right path to become a knowledge-based society? It doesn't look like it. Are we just expecting our students to suddenly realize that they are the nation's future and get their act together? Or should we try to make schools more relevant and motivating for students so that this happens naturally? If more students learn better, would that possibly motivate them to continue and not drop out of high school? Wouldn't that actually help to create a knowledge-based society? Okay, if we agree that society benefits from improved learning, how do we reach this goal? Well, then we're back to the gadgets. I believe it would be smart to take advantage of students' interest in ICT. Computers can teach us to learn things in different ways. And they also make learning advanced concepts easier, if that's what you want. Imagine, instead of reading about DNA molecules and cramming in facts you don't really understand, why not visualize, simulate and animate the DNA molecule? Wouldn't this make school more exciting? If you actually understand what you learn? How about math? Wouldn't learning improve if formulas were brought to life using dynamic graphs? Rather than struggling with cryptic X's and Y's? And how about other subjects? Would it inspire us to have all the information in the world at our fingertips just a few mouse clicks away? I think it would. I feel excited just thinking about it. So what's holding us back? Well, ICT is a part of the curriculum as the fifth basic skill. That's a good start. But the curriculum itself is no guarantee. Because nothing happens to those who don't follow it accurately. Therefore, it's probably more important to get the actual teachers into the idea of using ICT in their lessons. Could increased use of ICT in teacher training encourage teachers to use ICT in their own lessons? And what if they were given the time and resources to keep their ICT knowledge up to date? Wouldn't that pave the way for smarter use of ICT in education? Could we, by using ICT smartly, improve learning, motivation, and then results? If we could do that, wouldn't we be better suited to create the knowledge-based Norway of the future? The world has been around for 4.5 billion years. Internet only in the 1960s. Take that in for a moment. Back then, it only took a simple lollipop to make a child happy. It 
it's different now. The world today is full of people that seek perfection, affirmation, and assurance. It almost seems as if we rely on an imaginary stand set upon the society that we are expected to follow. However, instead of this standard helping us, it promotes a feeling of inferiority as it is very hard for for the people to keep up with this evolving perfectionist world. Instead of the digital world bringing us closer to one another, it acts as another barrier set upon by others. It shows us how inferior our ways of living are. For some reason, people find it comforting to bring others down. And it's much easier today No one is safe anywhere anymore. Bullying is not limited through the confines of the four walls of the classroom. It now seeps through the depths of the ugly parts of the internet. Otherwise known as cyberbullying. That's why we have to take a stand. Rather than continuing the chain of mal- and hate, let's turn it into a chain of positivity and love starting from ourselves. You are not the only one fighting this battle. It's you, me, and the whole That's why, don't be afraid. It is through courage and strength that we can win this war against cyberbullying. The next time you turn on your Wi-Fi and log into your social media, don't be like the world. Rather, be the change you want to happen in it. Be an upstander. One step and one Bacala Taitung High School a center of excellence for life lifelong learning. A place for students to hone their skills and capabilities. An Institution that provides quality education.
If it's digital, it's part of ICT. ICT, short for Information and Communications Technology, or Technologies, is a huge umbrella term. Though there's no universal definition, ICT generally refers to all devices, networking components, applications, and systems that facilitate interaction with the digital world. Sometimes, ICT is used interchangeably with IT, or information technology. But ICT is more comprehensive, including more components related to computers and digital technologies. Components include data, internet access, cloud computing, software, hardware, transactions, and communications technology. But more importantly, ICT encompasses combinations and applications of those components. ICT has drastically changed how people work, communicate, learn, and live, and continues to revolutionize all parts of the human experience, from computers to robots. And ICT contributes greatly to economic development. Some have labeled it the fourth industrial revolution. Within the ICT market, the advancement of ICT capabilities has made the development and delivery of various technologies cheaper for vendors and their customers, while also providing new market opportunities. For businesses, advances within ICT have brought a slew of cost savings, opportunities, and conveniences, ranging from highly automated, cost-cutting business processes, to the big data revolution that leads to new insights, products, and services, to ICT-driven transactions like online shopping, telemedicine, and social media. However, ICT is not without its downsides. The digitization of data has led to new levels of crime, automation tools and robots that can displace workers, and many believe ICT has stifled human interaction. What do you think? Has ICT caused us to be less human? Share your thoughts in the comments, and remember to hit that like button too. I've been thinking about something. We have so many cool gadgets nowadays. iPads and laptops and smart mobile phones. So how come we can hardly ever use them at school? Who decides that we, the people are supposed to learn, can't even use the tools we're most comfortable with? Use of these gadgets is abbreviated to ICT. Information and Communication Technology. In fact, many people believe that children learn much better by using ICT, but many local authorities struggle to provide their students with this. The problem is not the actual hardware. The schools are full of it. The problem is how to use ICT smartly to improve learning. But why is better learning important? Well, Norwegians like to think they are the best. However, the truth is that even though Norway spends more money on schools than most countries, Norwegian students score average on international PISA and TIMSS tests. Why is it like that? And what are the consequences? Norway currently makes a good living from its oil. However, it could all be gone by as soon as 2030. People say that after the oil, we will live off knowledge. As far as I can see, this means that more of us will have to get a good education. But with so many of our young people dropping out of high school, can we really claim that we're on the right path to become a knowledge-based society? It doesn't look like it. Are we just expecting our students to suddenly realize that they are the nation's future and get their act together? Or should we try to make schools more relevant and motivating for students so that this happens naturally? If more students learn better, would that possibly motivate them to continue and not drop out of high school? Wouldn't that actually help to create a knowledge-based society? Okay, if we agree that society benefits from improved learning, how do we reach this goal? Well, then we're back to the gadgets. I believe it would be smart to take advantage of students' interest in ICT. Computers can teach us to learn things in different ways. And they also make learning advanced concepts easier, if that's what you want. Imagine, 
instead of reading about DNA molecules and cramming in facts you don't really understand, why not visualize, simulate and animate the DNA molecule? Wouldn't this make school more exciting? If you actually understand what you learn? How about math? Wouldn't learning improve if formulas were brought to life using dynamic graphs? Rather than struggling with cryptic X's and Y's? And how about other subjects? Would it inspire us to have all the information in the world at our fingertips just a few mouse clicks away? I think it would. I feel excited just thinking about it. So what's holding us back? Well, ICT is a part of the curriculum as the fifth basic skill. That's a good start. But the curriculum itself is no guarantee because nothing happens to those who don't follow it accurately. Therefore, it's probably more important to get the actual teachers into the idea of using ICT in their lessons. Could increased use of ICT in teacher training encourage teachers to use ICT in their own lessons? And what if they were given the time and resources to keep their ICT knowledge up to date? Wouldn't that pave the way for smarter use of ICT in education? Could we, by using ICT smartly, improve learning, motivation, and then results? If we could do that, wouldn't we be better suited to create the knowledge-based Norway of the future? Today, our students live in a digitalized world. They are surrounded by applications, devices, and networks through which information flows constantly. The umbrella for this term is ICT. Information communication technologies are handling tools used to produce, store, process, distribute, and exchange information. served as leaders used ICTs as the focus of innovation, high quality learning opportunities, education management, and for extending the boundaries of the school. What are the components for successful ICTs in education? Without proper vision and leadership, we can expect failure. This has happened to many organizations where the wrong person was put in charge or simply did not care. Successful installation of the infrastructure. Commitment. Communicating and setting expectations. Professional learning for educators. So what has gone wrong with ICT in education? Failure to follow procedures. There are other issues such as access, equity, and resources. of learning, providing a gateway to the learner. We can keep focus on the student learning, collaborative learning, peer-to-peer -peer or group activities, enabling educators with ICT skills, how to use tools, techniques, and methodology, educators as facilitators, changing the role of the teacher, bridging the gap by eliminating power differentials, online blended learning for credit recovery, and project-based learning, constructing learning environments that give students control over time, 
place, path, and pace of learning.
Good morning, Bacolod Taitung community and friends. Welcome to Click Optimizing Literacy and Skills. So this time around, we are going to have one of our big events, this ICT Month celebration brought to you by Bacolod Taitung High School. And before we start our program, we would like to request our ESP subject area coordinator, no other than Ms. Lala Kliachko, to lead us in prayer. And this is to be followed by the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. As I sing my heart's thanksgiving and my eyes look heavenward, how the stars you flung like jewels bid your welcome, shine your light. As I marvel at your moonrise, I'm in awe, yet I ask, what am I? You should love me and hold me as your dearest love of all. You will crown me with honor and glory, and you set all things under my feet. You have made me a little less than angels, even if I fly often away. As I sing my heart's thanksgiving and my eyes look heavenward, how the stars you flung like jewels bid your welcome, shine your light. As I marvel at your moonrise, I'm in awe, yet I ask, what am I? should love me and hold me as your dearest love of all. In my anxious and browbeaten moments, you comfort me, fill me with peace. When my foes threat and dare and surround me, you're my strength, you're my light and my shield. As I sing my heart's thanksgiving and my eyes look heavenward, how the stars you flung like jewels bid your welcome, shine your light. As I marvel at your moonrise, I'm in awe, yet I ask, what am I? You should love me and hold me as your dearest love of all. How exalted your name is, O oh Lord, and how lofty the work of your hands. Yet how closely, how dearly you draw me to your love, your divine majesty. As I sing my heart's thanksgiving and my eyes look heavenward, how the stars you flung like jewels bid your welcome, shine your light. As I marvel at your moonrise, I'm in awe, yet I ask, what am I? You should love me and hold me as your dearest love of all. What am I that you should love me and hold me as your dearest love? 
Kababayan, ang Pambansang Awit ng Pilipinas. Hi again everyone, welcome and this is a beautiful Friday morning to all of us. I hope you're all ready to learn and have fun. So to our guest speakers, good morning. To all our friends on Facebook and YouTube, good morning everyone. We would take our time greeting those who are commenting on the comment box down below we have miss julie miss lala we have also miss maureen hi mom helen and hello mom Anne. good morning to all you beautiful ladies so this time around we are going to uh have fun while trying to learn about new things in the ict world i am mina retita and i will be your moderator for today as an ICT teacher, I always wondered about how to help uh, the beautiful generation of kids that we have nowadays. And so we often ask, how can we equip them to become good and responsible digital citizens? So how can we actually use uh, digital tools to share their messages responsibly, our messages too. And how can we support this generation's potentials, skills, and talents with the right media to express and influence assertively? In light with this, we bring you today's webinar, Click Optimizing ICT Literacy and Skills. So to start off with all the inspirational messages, let us have our ICT TLE subject area coordinator, no other than Mr. Roland Danilio, for his opening remarks. To our dynamic teachers, supportive parents, dear students, innovative school principal, Engineer Philip Rapina. A virtual morning greetings to everybody. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused various levels of disruption in the field of education. The new normal shifted to this learning paradigm. The new learning spaces, delivery methods, and even our teaching learning process. Our school, the Colonel of High School cope up and challenge itself on how to find ways to revitalize and reimagine the new transition. 
we have definitely embraced the new normal. And one of which is integrating and embracing technology. Information and communication technology has become an integral part in our lives. It has transformed and enhanced our educational system. For today, let me highlight some of the key significance of ICT in education. The first one is e-learning or online learning. The presence of ICT in education allows for new ways of learning for the students and for the teachers. Technology has become our partner in education. We have come to realize the significance of ICT tools and trends. The second one is ICT brings inclusion. It bridges the gap between the students and the teachers, the teaching and the teaching learning process. Through online platforms, we are able to provide access to essential materials and special IP tools for the students. The third one is ICT promotes higher order thinking skills. We know that one of the key skills for the 21st century includes evaluating, planning, monitoring, and reflecting. Information and communication technology became an essential tool to provide and to produce solutions to our problems. We become more analytical and creative. And the last one is ICT use encourages collaboration. ICT naturally brings our students together where they can talk, where they can discuss what they are doing. And this opens up avenues for communication, thus leading to language development. ICT integration is a key part of national curriculum. Through these innovative platforms, we are able to successfully deliver our learning instructions. Let's empower our students through digital literacy and internet media literacy. Bacolod Titum High School TLE ICT Department, in coordination with Student Council Organization and Student Development Office, initiates this webinar series entitled Click Optimizing ICT Literacy and Skills. So on behalf of the school, I would like to welcome you all in this webinar to our supportive Taitungyan community. Thank you for your continued support. To our esteemed speakers, thank you for accepting our invitation. We are really excited to learn from you. Thank you for your time. And to my team, TLE ICD Department, SEO and SDO, thank you for accepting the challenge. Before I end the message, let me share this statement given by Semenov in 2005. ICT will continue to be a significant part of our future as it connects to its more and more parts of our lives. It will continually evolve and change because as consumers, we all like a choice. We like to use ICT for personal growth, creativity, joy, consumption, and wealth. Once again, let's click and learn. To our dynamic teachers, supported by Thank you so much, Sir Roland Dionilio, and that was our ICT TLE Subject Area Coordinator in Bacolod Taitung High School. Um, I know you guys are very excited to learn with us this morning, but just a reminder, if you do have questions for our guest speakers this morning, you can comment it down below on Facebook and on YouTube. Just um, freely express yourself down there and we will cater your questions later. There will be a dedicated open forum segment during our webinar. 
All right, so that's one. And also, I guess you are really excited to find out who are our two incredible guest speakers this morning. So I would like to take the honors of introducing our first speaker. He is the digital coach of the top one network marketer in the Philippines. He started side hustling for the digital world back in 2014 before finally deciding to le leave his full-time job to pursue his digital career. He helps clients build income with MLM business models through digital marketing and is proud to be one of the top 10 consistent achievers in his industry in the past three years. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear students, friends, and the entire virtual community at the moment, it is my honor to introduce to you our social media marketing speaker, no other than Coach Nicolai Ramos. Let's give a round of virtual applause. Hello, hello. Good morning now. Can everyone hear me? Sorry, I think I'm mute. <laughs> uh, once again, good morning to uh, our fellow teachers here, uh, students, and maybe parents, and some of my fellow uh, colleagues who are listening as well. Um, uh, I hope uh, now everyone can hear me loud and clear. Yes, you know, just say yes in the comments so I can see. Um, uh, and I'm very, once again, I'm very privileged to share to you um, uh, this training that I usually give uh, talk to for new people, lalo na sa inyo, um, Gen Z, you're really interested, you're really excited on how you can um, integrate online with whatever you want to pursue with your passion, whether it's um, marketing, um, it's art, or whether it's um, creating uh, blogs, so I'm excited now to share to you um, this training. So um, let me share my screen so we can get this started, okay? Uh, if we're all ready, can you give me some heart or like so I can feel that you're not uh, sleeping? <laughs> so um, just comment that I'm ready, I'm excited, so that I can feel that uh, I have an audience here. <laughs> okay, let me share my screen. Let me see if uh, it's already showing. Oops. Okay, showing. All right. Thank you. Uh, once again, thank you for, um, I just want to say thank you also to Sir Lander for uh, inviting me for this uh, session, which is called Social media marketing. Yeah, nakita ko na sa live. I'm ready. Yeah, sabi ni ano. Yeah, we are ready. I can see a lot of people now commenting. All right. Um, uh, I hope I won't take too much of time of your time. I will make sure I will finish within the time within my time slot. Okay. So uh, thank you for uh, introducing to me. You already know a little bit of my background. So my name is Nikolai Ramos. Um, I'm the digital coach. Uh, but with by to the number one uh, network marketer for the past 30 years and i've been also doing this type of business for the past six years um and i've never looked back uh, because there's so many opportunities very exciting to do this type of business laluna if you integrate it with online marketing uh, but before we go into social media marketing uh, it's very important that we know uh, digital marketing because they go hand in hand. Actually, the main, when you talk about online marketing, lagging digital marketing, they're, they're, they're interchangeable, those words. It's basically 
um, marketing your products or business through online. That's the simple definition of digital marketing. So, Nikolai, why are we talking about digital marketing? Because um, there are many types of digital marketing. And my task is talk, to talk about social media marketing and how you can take advantage of it, uh, especially if you want to start building a brand for yourself. So here you can see there are different types. But specifically, uh, and we discuss natin, we're going to talk more about social media marketing. All right. Uh, so here are the five objectives uh, for my session this morning. Uh, first thing is online is the only way to progress. Uh, sabi nga ni uh, Sir Lander dun sa talk, this, dun sa introduction niya, you know, um, this, this uh, community or this group that you've built right now has really helped uh, uh, grow yourselves in terms of learning and building your skills. So, so second is learn the basics of starting an online profitable business. So it's not just doing online marketing, but to be profitable as well, especially if you want to go into business. Choosing an online platform. So I'll be hel helping you to decide, San ba ako mag -focus? where will I put my energy and my heart to building content? Uh, the fourth is create a sustainable content strategy, and the fifth is incre increase your potential income poten your income potential. So if you're gonna do this as a side hustle, just like how I started, or something that you want to pursue after you graduate, this is a potential uh, profession. Uh, I always like to start this uh, talk with this quote by the great Bill Gates. If your business is not on the internet, then your business will be out of business. You guys agree? <laughs> so I'm sure uh, most of you would say yes. Uh, if you are going to start a business right now, it must be online. Okay. And here are some of the companies or businesses na they didn't listen. <laughs> so here are some of them. Maybe uh, your teachers know this. <laughs> These are for millennials or even baby boomers. You know, Friendster is ready to gone. MySpace, uh, Blackberry, Yahoo, Nokia, Kodak. So these are just some of the companies that were not able to innovate. So what happened was um, they either were forced to shut down their companies or their businesses because they didn't want to go online or integrate digital marketing in their businesses. Because uh, sometimes it's you cannot teach old, you can't teach old dogs. It's hard to teach them. Um, so here, what I like to do always when I do my trainings, especially for beginners in social media marketing, we have to learn about the numbers. So you guys can actually find this. Uh, numbers and figures in Google, not no time in Google, but I just handpicked some numbers um, uh, that that is perfect for this session. Okay, so if you'll see here, it's January 2021. So uh, I just want to, uh, I'll send you, I'm still waiting for the latest, but this is what are the numbers so far for the digital people around the world. Total population, 7 billion, 5 billion, 4.6 billion. So there's a lot of people who are into the internet. Uh, people who are using mobile internet, okay? So total number of mobile internet users, you can just take a screenshot of this and even Google where you can find it. Uh, mobile internet use as a percent of total internet users, about 92%. That's a lot of people. And the average daily time spent is about three hours. But I don't believe na three hours lang kayo. Okay, can you comment how many hours are you spending per day in the internet? Baka your whole day, right? Especially uh, to the students here who are listening. Now, What's the world's most used social platform? It's very interesting. So uh, I'm sure it's not, it's still the same even this year, even this January. So Facebook is still king. Most people are still into Facebook. Where we're doing this training, where this is doing, going live right now, it's still on Facebook. And second is YouTube. Third is WhatsApp, FB Messenger, Instagram. Okay, so this is January of last year, but there are some updates that I will share to you in the next slide. What's the most trending platform this year? I'm sure you guys can guess that. So here, let's go. Let's focus. Focus on the Philippines because 
Uh, majority naman tayo, if not all, are listening in the Philippines, specifically in Bacolod, if I'm not mistaken. So population by age group. Total population, 110 million, okay? So this is important that you guys know this, so you know who you are going to target if you want to target your market to these types of people or this demographic. So population age 13 and above, 74 million. Population age 18 and above, about 64 million. Population age 16 to 64, 62 million. If you notice, madaming Gen Z, majority. So there's a lot of young kids out there that we can market uh, your business or product. Now, if you are going to go into e-commerce, you know, device ownership. Let's see here naman. 98% um, use mobile phones. Smartphone, 98%. Non-smartphone, mobile phone, 13%. I'm just going to focus on these three categories. If you'll see here, yung sinasabi kasi ng iba, they don't have money. Kulang pera nila. <laughs> but how come here, eh, by the figures, uh, about more than about 90%, 98% have a smartphone and mobile phone. So, that means most people, if you are going to market your product or business, or if you want them to listen or read your newsletter, make sure it is um, it is easy for them to read it or to buy it through their mobile phones. Okay, and daily time spent on social media. So if you see here, um, uh, most of us uh, Filipinos, we spend using the internet 10 hours. And if you will see here, what do they do on those 10 hours? Four hours spent on social media. See, nga, how about you guys? How many hours do you spend on social media alone? Okay, so you can comment there or type how many hours. Because me personally, I spend about four hours, four to six hours per day uh, on social media. Four hours of mostly business talaga. Try to market my business, try to market my brand. Um, so there are a lot of people who might uh, spend longer than that, okay? Uh, online content activities. So what do most Filipinos do when they are online? Uh, they watch videos. That's why YouTube is uh, really growing, has really grown its numbers. They watch vlogs. Yeah, even me, I love watching vlogs. We listen to like uh, music streaming services like Spotify or on online radio station or watch podcasts. Yung podcast dito, it's still not as famous compared to westernized to Western countries. But most of us here in Philippines, we watch uh, videos. So if you'll see here, most people watch or go to YouTube, not even Facebook. Okay, so a lot of us here... Uh, do a lot of uh, watching the YouTube, Facebook, and you can see here Instagram is catching up and TikTok is uh, catching up as well. So I like to show this to you, especially to first time who are still not, uh, who still are not so informed about social media. You know where you will focus your energy on because nakita mo oh, yeah, pala dito sa people Filipinos pala are really. Um, focused more on YouTube compared to Facebook. It's not a big percentage though, but now you see bakit marami tayong mga vloggers kasi that is where the people are. Uh, this is, I'm sure this is different now from this month, but the, the top search queries um, last year was, these are the there, these are the names or lists. So if you want to focus on, on having people to visit your YouTube content, your channel, try to talk about these topics but i'm sure that the topics this year would be much more different to uh cater to your market so e-commerce naman e-commerce spend by category so this is um, actually pre-covid these are the numbers pre-covid okay i want to make myself clear here so um in this category travel on mobility is the highest but in your guys uh three billion is travel, mobility, and accommodation, okay? Um, and uh, personal care, 483 million. Uh, fashion and beauty, 652 million. Electronics and physical media, 955 million. So in these numbers, uh, I want to show you what happened no naga covid na. Until now, it's still the same pretty much. So when COVID happened, obviously, it's quite obvious anyway, travel, mobility, and accommodation, 
decreased. Okay, it was, it became, they suffered the most. Kaya you've seen so many airlines that had to shut down. They don't have a choice. I had friends who are uh, flight attendants who were um, who who who, le- who lost their jobs because of it. Because you know, hirap na ngay travel. But what increased the most is food and personal care and video games. Yeah, and kasi marami nang into that and lahat na sa bahay lang. Uh, and I was actually surprised to see fashion and beauty. So, marami pa rin uh, They still have time to buy stuff. And of course, physical and ele- electronics. So, more people upgraded their laptops, their phones. Kasi yun nga, people are just at home. Uh, so, this is where you should focus on if you decide to market your product, market your service uh, in the online world. Okay, so here, here is uh, here's a study that was given to me by uh, an operations manager by a big company, a multinational company, um, where the most people right now, this is not just Philippines, but globally, uh, are more concerned about sustainability than they were before COVID-19. So you see here, mas bilib nga ako sa mga Gen Z ngayon, they're now informed they're now educated ako wala naman ako pa kaya dati ko ano yan climate change but now because of the wealth of information people now are more concerned if this product reduces plastic use and more people know about being more vegan plant-based diet being healthy so uh, i'm very excited because that's where my industry is because dun tayo napupunta ngayon we are more health conscious uh, because we are now stuck at home. So don't just watch Netflix. Don't just watch uh, K-pop all the time. Or, or K-drama and just eat away, eat food, eat a uh, junk. Try to be more conscious with what you eat. And here is actually the latest trend. Uh, that was our, what I was saying. Uh, grab it all because I know all of us uh, use Google to research. So if you see here, this was... a. Uh, this was an article that I saw uh, last, just last month. TikTok is now the leader in the most pop, is the leader where people just watch or even learn information. Hindi na Google. So there, that is, that is a big, big change of where the market is in terms of where the people uh, focus their attention to. So I'm sure there's a lot of Gen Zers here, mga students here who are listening. I, I'm sure all of you have your TikTok account. Nagulat nga ako yung pamangkin ko. He knew more information. He got more information about what anime to watch, um, what is the news, the latest updates because of TikTok, not even YouTube. So these are the two platforms that you guys should look into if you want to build your brand. Okay, so with all this information, ah, Nicole, and dami pala, no? Uh, and I'm sure you've learned, you're learning a lot right now. What should I do? Okay, what should I do? So here is the first thing I would tell you. The first thing is choose your platform. Decide where you want to focus your energy on. So uh, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you guys uh, who are listening right now. You can type in what platform do you want to focus on? Is it on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok? Meron pang ang kumu. Um, uh, Pinterest, so where do you want to focus your um, energy on? So for me personally, I focus on Facebook uh, a lot, uh, Instagram, a little bit of TikTok, and YouTube. Okay, so these are the things that uh, you should be thinking of right now if you want to go more in in depth with your social media strategy. So I see some comments here, TikTok. See, it really shows people are going to TikTok now. Majority are TikTok. Okay, uh, and YouTube, that's good. And then after you've decided um, your platform, second is know your targeted audience. Okay, I'm not going to say target market because most of you here are focusing on building a following first maybe or building a brand. Know your target uh, targeted audience. <laughs> so TikTok, I see a lot of people who are very successful. They know sino yung kausap nila. They know that this content will make the younger generation laugh. Kaya sikat yung mga uh, 
funny, entertaining TikTok videos because it talks and speaks to your audience. It's very important that you know your target market and in your audience. Now, this is more of when you're when you decide to sell a product, maybe or sell uh, your business, uh, anything, especially with my industry. So questions to answer when you create an offer. Who are you? Why will why would I buy from you? So for example, I am selling, I am selling a health product, okay, a health product or a skincare product, okay, yung pampaganda, pampaputi. So the first thing is, who are you? Why would I buy from you? What do you have compared to other people? And why should I listen to you? So people would buy from me or buy from the person who is selling the skincare product, if nakita nila, maputi ka naman, makinis ka naman, uh, I'd rather buy actually from a person who really went through that experience compared to someone who is just a celebrity. Na, o oh nga, maganda, or guapo, pero obviously, hindi, lang, hindi yan gumamit ng product. Uh, endorser lang yan. I like, I'd rather buy from real people with real testimonies. And these last two questions is mostly... It's, it would depend because if you are trying to have people like in my industry, I'm trying to have them learn more about my business, learn more about my product. If they want to earn a side hustle, the two questions, main questions they would ask is, can I do this also? Nikolai, what if mahihayin ako? What if hindi ako marunong sa social media? What if hindi ako marunong sa online marketing? Um, can I do this as well? So yes, you can because I have a training where you can learn at your own time and you don't have to speak to people offline you don't have to do demo products so now that is why uh, most of my uh, best sellers in my company in my industry are the shyest people i've met <laughs> because nakita nila kaya pala kasi sa bahay lang pala online posting lang pala pm content creation and then is this worth it is this worth my time if I'm going to do this type of business. So again, I'm going to use my example. Uh, if I want to sell these products, um, the, how do does it require five hours of my day, whole day? I know in my industry, I, I cater to a lot of moms and some there are also some millennials um, and they say, I don't have time. I always tell them, you only have to spend one hour of your day and you can already sell a lot of products. Just follow my train and follow my system. Okay, so if you are trying to have people, I think uh, uh, the second speaker after me is into filmmaking and maybe he wants to help people learn about filmmaking. Is this worth their time? Yes, it, it can be as long as there is a proper system where they can learn uh, as easy and convenient as possible. Okay, so next is create your online strategy for social media, all right? Um, so here, uh, let's create your online strategy. But what I would uh, recommend if you already decided to start posting, to create your, to create your online um, presence to the world, find your benchmark. That's very important. Find first, sino yung gusto mong i-model? Hindi naman necessarily copy, okay? Find your benchmark. So these are my benchmark uh, in in the global uh, world. Th th these are the global leaders. So this is Russell Brunson. If you guys are not familiar, he is known. He's the founder of ClickFunnels. Basically, he creates funnels. Kung hindi nyo lang anong funnels, it's like a landing page that will help people opt in to get leads, to make them subscribe, or to make them buy products. Okay, simple as that. And then Gary Vaynerchuk, he is... Uh, he really changed my mindset about marketing. He taught me everything about how to approach marketing without hard selling people. And then Peng Jun, he's all about video marketing. Then I to talk about video marketing. So find your benchmark. So kung hindi kayo familiar dyan, meron ako mga local benchmark na I'm sure, I'm sure the people, the audience right now know about. So these are the three people. So meron si Kong TV, Power, <laughs> Team Payaman. I follow him a lot because uh, I inspire ako how he created, he built his following, how he built his audience just by producing 
uh, entertaining content. Okay, so if you want to build a following, you want to be an influencer, air quotes, <laughs> uh, you can follow what he posts as well. Um, and here's the present. Uh, more about financial because i'm into financial advice as well where to put your investments and this is miss glenda if you are into selling skincare products she is one of the best people to follow and you can see paano niya na build yung business niya kasi uh, bil grabe talaga yung na grow niya meron niya siyang mga billboards already she's not a celebrity she started from scratch here in uh, rizal antipolo next if you want to start selling products um you can Again, find your benchmark. If it's, if it's not building a brand, if you want to just sell products, find big companies that are selling very well. Okay, so this is my product that I sell. Okay, this is also a, a nutrition company that I follow because it relates to the products that I sell. So maghanap ako ng similar to what they sell. Okay. Uh, now here. Uh, there's Billy Bako dito sa Angel's Pizza because there's so many people who are selling pizza here in Philippines. Pero I was intrigued how they're able to capture a market. Okay, kahit saturated na sila. Because they're able to offer a different type of service. They had a day, this signature creamy spinach pizza. Uh, if you haven't tried it, it's one of the best. And they're able to get a market because they have very... Uh, uh, attractive promos okay and there's also goldilocks so you can see here what they offer and then you create your own offer so you follow and model your business but not copy and see what you can do that will cater to your targeted um, audience so now with your content strategy um, inform educate and entertain that's the main thing that i would say if you start your content strategy just focus on these three things. Kasi napansin ko sa iba, they get excited. Uh, I remember one of my cousins, he said, Nikolai, gusto ko ginagawa mo. I want to do social media. I want to sell products. But what I see dun sa content niya, which is very famous on this generation now, is puro meme. Okay? All he posts is meme, meme, meme. So it's really funny. I find it entertaining. But if you want to sell products, People will not take you seriously because that's all you post, <laughs> okay? So if you are into really selling and you want to get that quick buck, you need to find a way to sell your products, maybe create your own page, maybe go into shop, or maybe go into Shopee, Lazada, all these e-commerce platforms and start to sell products, okay? Uh, so here are examples on creating your content naman. So focusing on value, okay? You make sure you focus on value when you're going to create your content. So here are examples, okay? So you, you guys already know I'm in the industry of network marketing. And I'm sure the teachers here, and the parents here are listening. There's a stigma. Pag networking, ang sabihin agad, open-minded ka ba? <laughs> kape, tara, kape tayo. That's the stigma, di ba? Uh, kidnap style, that was the old way. That's why I was not into this type of business. Only until I learned about integrating digital marketing in the business or in this industry so that is where we, i focus my content to create curiosity to be to have that attraction marketing uh posts to get uh people interested in what i do okay and here are more pointers so let's say you are trying to sell uh a weight loss product okay but you know magsabi na oh, buy now para pumayat ka or you can look at this picture right here. It has to be, try to follow these categories. It has to be eye-catching, clear focal point, uncluttered, high resolution as much as possible, unexpected eye contact, and curiosity. Okay, if you'll see here in Galingo, fast in progress. Very eye-catching. It will make you curious what this person is doing, okay? Uh, if you are trying to sell food, um, don't just post a photo of uh, food delivered, but you can post the photo while you're making it. Tsaka, pag nag-picture kayo, hanapin niyo yung tamang angle. Okay, so I'm sure the Gen Zers here, you guys know how to find the right angle to really make your food look attractive. Okay, and if it's a picture of yourself, um, you can also do something like this. All right, so uh, I hope we're learning something. 
so far in this session. Um, if you are, you know, type yes, give me a heart. So I know I'm bringing in value to all of you who are listening right now. Okay, so these are some pointers if you're going to start creating content in whichever platform you want to focus on. So here's even a more interesting post uh, from one of our members in our company. Uh, she's So we, we, are, we sell aloe vera, okay? We're known as the aloe vera company, the largest producer and manufacturer of aloe vera. So if we are, since we are known for that, we can easily say, sell aloe vera, buy this now. <laughs> but no, she did it this way, which is the right way right now. She, she's into yoga and she posted the aloe vera, right? With a yoga pose. So this will, again, spark curiosity, diba? Let's go back here. Oops. Let's go back here. Spark curiosity. Uh, unexpected. It's actually high resolution, okay? I just took a screenshot, kaya hindi high resolution. But here is one way of you um, getting the audience, getting the people to be interested in what you are doing right now. So remember, if since I'm talking about social media marketing, marketing in general is a generous app to what? Not to sell, okay? And it's not to sell. We're not into sales right now. Marketing and sales are different. Marketing is an app to serve the goals of your audience. It's to help them achieve or solve their problem, okay? So that is what marketing is about, especially in social media. So this is the community that I've already built. Um, and in marketing, what's important is building your audience first, the customers right away. Okay, of course, you have to sell, you have to build sales because if not, you don't have a profitable business. But gain a proper audience, make them follow you first. Diba? Ginamit ko yung example ni uh, Team Payaman, Kong TV, kaya ang dami na lang subscribers because he started first building the audience. I have friends who are vloggers influencers that's how they started and now when they start to sell products once to they introduce the shirts food they will buy the, their followers will buy because they already know like and trust the person okay so this is an example i i built uh, a community of like-minded people who wants to learn more about my products because i have two types of people that i meet or encounter in my business people who like my product or people who want to learn about selling online so if they if i have a buyer or i have a client or prospect who wants to learn about my product i put them in a community where we talk about healthy living nilang buying product so they learn about healthy living about living an organic lifestyle and that's where um where our community grows and then about selling online which you guys can also be a part of it's all free i don't charge you anything this is where i put weekly tips on uh building your um social presence social media presence so put in the work um i already seen people commenting on what platforms you want to focus on ideally just focus on one but because you are still young uh well, not this young, but you're really interested about social media, try to get a taste of each platform and see where you enjoy the most. Okay, See where you don't feel bored, you don't feel tired to create content on. And if you if you wake up and you, if you feel like you can create content as if like you're brushing your teeth, that's the platform for you. That's usually the basis quit. Na you don't feel tired and parang part na sa routine mo. Yung creating content, ta, hindi yung nanonood lang ha. But creating content on that platform, that's the platform you focus your energy on. Uh, and then make a social calendar, schedule your posts, it's very important. This this fourth one, boost to like-minded audience. Um, I'm not going to go into it too much, but it's more about Facebook advertising, ads in general, social media ads. Uh, it's very, very helpful for your business if you want to reach to more people compared to organic marketing, okay? Then how to post, make sure it's always about informing or educating or entertaining, okay? So create the page. If you are in Facebook or if you're on other platforms, if you have a YouTube account, create a channel, uh, create a TikTok account, create an IG account, Pinterest. So decide right now. Uh, where you want to. So if it's in Facebook, this is what I would advise you. Create a page right now. 
for your business product or for your personal brand okay so that you can grow your following and grow um, your audience and then plan your strategy to post uh, daily okay plan your strategy to post daily so here's an example um, on how you can expand your reach so post frequency these are what people always ask me um, do i want growth maintenance decline of course lahat kayo you will say growth diba so how many times should i post per week coach nikolai so if you want growth it has to be six posts a week okay six times so it's almost every day you have to learn okay how to grow your audience if you want maintenance ah, masaya ka na. Uh, you already grown enough go stick with three to five posts per week so if you don't care Post ka lang kung kahit ilang meme <laughs> just to entertain people but you're not you don't have a strategy okay because these people nakita mo marami following they have a strategy because I speak to them they are my friends I see how they create their iniisip talaga nila how they're gonna plan their content for the week that's why they have content every day and post frequently this very also this also important post as frequently as possible without seeing a decrease in engagement so you might follow what I am telling you about um, posting every day and then sabihin mo, sabi ni Coach Nicolai, post six times a week. How come I don't see engagement? It's important to analyze as well. Give it around two weeks, two weeks to three weeks if you still don't see engagement in your post. It's time to focus in on all your posts on what had the most engagement, what had most likes, most comments. Tapos start to focus on creating a content where that has the most engagement from okay time of day uh I, there's no specific time it's very subjective depends on your audience kung saan sila always uh online which is most of the time naman either breakfast time dinner time that's it don't have to over analyze on this on where to post okay and then last one is is very important for the cta what is cta nikolai you're gonna hear this a lot in the digital marketing world call to action okay cta call to action how can a person engage how can a person buy how can a person subscribe from your channel you have to have a call to action at the end of every post okay if you are trying to make them subscribe okay or buy your product but have at least two to three ctas per week so comment below, share this post, tag friends, click the link in my bio, go to my story. So here are very good examples. Uh, if you see here, it's a screenshot because this was a training that I paid for, that I'm sharing to you, that has been very helpful for my team and for myself. So uh, try to look into this on creating CTAs as well if you want to have more, if you want to build an audience or sell more products. So very important is in success lalo na sa social media and so i already showed you a grasp of how it looks like goal what is your goal build an audience build a following or start building your small business okay so now if you want to build a small business make a plan where will i focus my content on facebook ba instagram TikTok, and very important for sustained success consistency okay hindi lang na excited kayo ngayon oh my gosh i learned a lot from these two speakers Let's type to post. Tapos next week, pagod ka na. Sige, pahinga mo na ako. Nod mo na ako ng YouTube, Netflix. So you're not going to be successful. And you're going to end up staying in where you are right now. So it's important that you're consistent and persistent with your goals. So it's so write it down right now what you want to achieve for yourself, for your small business, or for your personal brand. Okay, so a quick recap. Before I end this, uh, find your benchmark, who you want to model your business, who do you want to model your uh, account or channel, uh, create a system that is educating, entertaining on your content, track your progress, okay? Hindi lang basta bara-bara, posting lang. You have to look what content is, uh, is really responding to your audience. Focus on value, okay? Focus on value when you're creating content. Uh, build an audience first uh, before selling a product. Post consistently and most importantly, okay, especially to you students, be patient and adjust. Okay, there's no shortcuts to success. It is a long process, but if you're consistent enough, you will see massive results 
in your business, in your community, in your following. Okay. Uh, so thank you once again. If you have any questions, you can ask it later. I think Meron Tayong Forum. So you can follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok. So Meron on TikTok, but I'm rebranding right now to so TikTok and Instagram. I'm more active on Facebook and my YouTube channel. I have a couple of videos there, but I'll start uploading again this coming uh, year. Okay. So you can like and subscribe on my YouTube account. And I also have some TikTok videos there. Um, uh, not so, not as professional as this, more on laugh trip entertainment. Because, yeah, diba guys, uh, inform, educate, entertain. So, it's mostly entertainment there on that uh, channel. So, before I end this, uh, I want to make sure that uh, all of you start putting in the work on your business or whatever you want to put in the work. And remember, guys, you only get one life. So, do what makes you happy in whatever endeavor you plan to pursue on, whether it's in. Uh, Creating content, being a columnist, filmmaking, do what makes you happy and be consistent with it. Okay, so once again, my name is Nikolai Ramos. Uh, I'm excited to continue to be of service to you during this session. So thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Coach Nikolai. That was really amazing. In fact, our audiences um, are having such great comments with your talk. So we'll read one, all right? From Ms. Lala Kayachko, she said, so relevant, so important. We all are potential influencers and we have so much to give to serve. So ayun, na-inspire kaming lahat sa uh, talk ni Coach Nico. <laughs> and um, there are more comments um let's all start our channels and support each other wow yes. <laughs> all right so coach nico thank you so much for giving us your time and for sharing to us your wisdom and your expertise we won't let this day end without appreciating you and so this is the time to give your certificate of appreciation We would also like to request the presence of our school principal, Engineer Philip Corpina, and our ICTPLE coordinator, Mr. Roland Unilio. The certificate reads, Certificate of Appreciation is proudly presented to Nikolai Ramos for imparting his invaluable knowledge and field of expertise as keynote speaker with the topic Social Media Marketing during the Bacolod Titan High School ICT Month Celebration 2022 with the theme Click Optimizing ICT Literacy and Skills held on January 21, 2022, given this 21st day of January 2022 via Restream. Signed by, of course, our subject area coordinator, Sir Roland S. Lunilio, our head of the Student Development Office, Ms. Maureen Mejica, and our school principal, Engineer Philip Corpina. We'll have this chance for a quick photo op. So in three, two, oh, we also have Ms. Maureen with us. All right, three, two, one, smile. Thank you so much, Coach Nico. And this time, we will let Coach Nikolai have his recess. <laughs> and then later, we'll have him back for the open forum. We have seen so many questions already on the comment box. So, yeah. And before we proceed to the second part of our learning session this morning, we would um i think we would be entertained with a little special number from the grade 10 students of Bacolod Titan high school let's watch this
But wala namang hanglang All right, everyone. We wanted to hear and witness that amazing special number. But as of the moment, our technical team is figuring out how to uh, make it not so heavy with our stream. And while they're doing that, let us all learn what is ICD. Okay, let's get to watch another video. I've been thinking about something. We have so many cool gadgets nowadays. iPads and laptops and smart mobile phones. So how come we can hardly ever use them at school? Who decides that we, the people are supposed to learn, can't even use the tools we're most comfortable with? Use of these gadgets is abbreviated to ICT, Information and Communication Technology. In fact, many people believe that children learn much better by using ICT, but many local authorities struggle to provide their students with this. The problem is not the actual hardware. The schools are full of it. The problem is how to use ICT smartly to improve learning. But why is better learning important? Well, Norwegians like to think they are the best. However, the truth is that even though Norway spends more money on schools than most countries, Norwegian students score average on international PISA and TIMSS tests. Why is it like that? And what are the consequences? Norway currently makes a good living from its oil. However, it could all be gone by as soon as 2030. People say that after the oil, we will live off knowledge. As far as I can see, this means that more of us will have to get a good education. But with so many of our young people dropping out of high school, can we really claim that we're on the right path to become a knowledge-based society? It doesn't look like it. Should we try to make schools more relevant and motivating for students so that this happens naturally? If more students learn better, would that possibly motivate them to continue and not drop out of high school? Wouldn't that actually help to create a knowledge-based society? Okay, if we agree that society benefits from improved learning, how do we reach this goal? Well, then we're back to the gadgets. I believe it would be smart to take advantage of students' interest in ICT. Computers can teach us to learn things in different ways. And they also make learning advanced concepts easier, if that's what you want. Imagine! Instead of reading about DNA molecules and cramming in facts you don't really understand, why not visualize, simulate and animate the DNA molecule? Wouldn't this make school more exciting? If you actually understand what you learn? How about math? Wouldn't learning improve if formulas were brought to life using dynamic graphs? Rather than struggling with cryptic X's and Y's? And how about other subjects? Would it inspire us to have all the information in the world at our fingertips just a few mouse clicks away? I think it would. I feel excited just thinking about it. So what's holding us back? Well, ICT is a part of the curriculum as the fifth basic skill. That's a good start. But the curriculum itself is no guarantee because nothing happens to those who don't follow it accurately. Therefore, it's probably more important to get the actual teachers into the idea of using ICT in their lessons. Could increased use of ICT in teacher training encourage teachers to use ICT in their own lessons? 
And what if they were given the time and resources to keep their ICT knowledge up to date? Wouldn't that pave the way for smarter use of ICT in education? Could we, by using ICT smartly, improve learning, motivation, and then results? If we could do that, wouldn't we be better suited to create the knowledge-based Norway of the future? There you have it. Okay, so um, you guys, for those who just joined us with our stream, this is Click Optimizing ICT Literacy and Skills by Bacolod Tegtong High School. And now we are on the next part of our learning sessions. Before so, I would like to take the honors again to introduce our second guest speaker. He is a writer actor and director for theater and film based in Sagay City, Negros Occidental Province of the Philippines. He earned his Bachelor of Arts in Communications degree at the University of St. Rosal Bacolod and have worked as a reporter in a local and national newspaper. His background in journalism helped him in creating stories inspired by the realities of his home province. In 2019, he wrote and directed the film Buding, Ang Babae Nga Naglutaw, his third film after four years, and it won the Best Short Film Award in Cine Negrense, Negros Island Film Festival. It also won Cine Casimanua Western Visayas Film Festival and Jury Prize at the Cebu-based Bamasa Film Festival. It was also a finalist at the Vid C. Jury Philippines 2020 and was exhibited at the Cinemalaya Philippine Independent Film Festival and Pista ng Pelikulang Pilipino. He is also one of the founding directors of the Marga Film Festival, the only citywide film festival in Negros Occidental in 2020. His 2021 film, Mga Bagong Nawong Sangdanggo Pagkatingalahan, is part of the National Committee on Cinema's Omnibus Film about the pandemic, which only features 16 filmmakers in the entire Philippines. It then went to Gawad Alternativo of the Cultural Center of the Philippines, where it won the Best Regional Film, and also on Cine Isla Luz Viminda short film competition of the Film Development Council of the Philippines. And the prestigious Singapore International Festival representing the country in the Southeast Asian short film competition all in the same year. He currently works as a media and communications consultant in Sagay City and project officer for advocacy and campaigns for Multiply Ed Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, to share to us lessons and experiences in film directing, let us welcome Mr. Mark Raymond Garcia. Hello, everyone. Ayun. Hello, Lumina. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone, and I hope everything everyone is safe and um amid these challenging times, especially that the COVID um, cases is increasing right now. So, um, I hope, um, okay, kamuda. Um, kamusta tanan? Um, I think and I believe that you had so many things that you've learned from the previous speaker, and I hope you could learn some things from me, <laughs> especially this is um, um, not so, uh, um, this is more of on the art or in the creative process of how to create short films, especially set, set in a regional perspective. So, um, my film, ah, sorry, I'll just share the link. Um, yun. Um, this is my um, presentation. Uh, it's entitled Beyond the Literal, Lessons and Experiences in Film Directing. So, um, as you would know, um, most of the time, I believe that when you create stories, you'd always would want to go beyond that something that is an art at the surface. Um, we always go beyond what is um, the meaning behind it, what's the, uh, apart from the literal meaning of it, we go beyond on what's, why did it 
became like that, why it, it became something like this. Um, my experience in filmmaking started when I was um, when I was a kid. Um, I used to wa- I just want to make my penmanship beautiful. I'm gusto ko lang yung magnami ako nga agi sa una. So I would I would tend to repeat um, writing my name um, uh, until nga magnami na siya. And it turns out that after I write my name, I could I could write sentences, phrases, paragraphs, and then I had my hobby in writing. So, uh, when I was in high school, I joined student publications. Um, I believe Taitong has a student publication as well. And um, going to college, um, I chose math, math commerce my course. But during those times, I had this um, um, experience or learnings that I got from theater, from film. And it turns out to realize some things. When I was a kid, I would I would love to like arrange things. I would want I would watch TV all day until the TV turns blue. I don't know if nagyan yun pa na. And then um, when I was in college, na balik na ako ng experience. I tend to watch so many films. Um, I engaged myself in theater, in writing scripts, in acting. So um, then there I developed my 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 skill in filmmaking. So I went to Manila. I got a for the uh, theater production course in Benild and went back here and um, worked as a journalist. But um, I thought I would be a writer in the re- for the rest of my life. But opportunities came. I had my tra- more training in theater and um, I went back to one of the things that I love, which is filmmaking. So um, right then and there, um, I, I wrote the film, Buding Babay Naglutaw, and it all started there. The opportunities went um, for me. Um, the um, opportunities to create films in the region, in, from the region, represent the Philippines in Singapore. So, the opportunities you nag know, um, and luckily, ayun, um, I still we still do. We're we're having um, projects for this year, and I hope it will be pushed through and would be. Um, distributed um, in in the national uh, perspective. So, going back to my um, presentation, ayon, um, I would begin um, in giving you the film, um, ayon, the film forms and my experience in the process of creating a short film and some tips that I hope you could um, use in making your own film as well. So, film form is a system of principles and relationships of those principles in creating the film. So these are the kinds of elements, basic elements that we could see in a short film or maybe in a full length of film or a short film. So uh, these are the most common yung mga elements that um, filmmakers would play around and create an interesting a film. So um, basic principles are number one, function. I don't know if you're familiar with this film. This is a film still from Parasite. This is the first um, non-English film that won the Best Picture Award in the Academy, in the Oscars, in the last two years. So, um, function. When I say function, we all, the filmmaker would tend to answer the question, why? What is the purpose of that film? Um, um, para sa diin, um, is it for entertainment? Um, do you want to say something, what is the message of that film ang nga gina-create mo. So, um, most of the time, um, mga mainstream na films, uh, would, most of the time, the, the function would be to entertain people. But some of the fi- other films, man, you, that would send you um, some sort of message. For example, this film, Parasite, um, its function is to um, emphasize or to tell story about the social class in Korea. So, after this film was released, um, the Korean government ad- addressed that issue. So, um, basically, films could be a medium for you to um, uh, voice out your message as an artist or as a filmmaker and um, hope that the audience or the people would act on it. So, that's it. Function. Next up is another element in, the film- in filmmaking is repetition. So, this is... Um, using this element for audiences' familiarity. So repetition is something that you repeat on the film. Um, for example, um, in this picture below, um, this is a film still 
from the platform in, in the net in Netflix na siya nagagawa. So um the story is about um people who is um in a cell in the prison where the food is just going up and down. So the it's rep- the repetition there is every day um gasaka panaog lang ang food, ginagajutay, ginagajutas, nang panaog, panaog. Um in this and the other film um Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind galipit nga galipit ang situation until the audience would realize nga yeah, there's something strange in this film so we repeat forest elements in film like um the line maybe the dialogue maybe the um, appearance of the character maybe the use of color um in the film or um repetition in terms of um camera angles because some uh, when something's repeated um the, the tendency would be we tend to be to familiarize with that we tend to like embrace that kind of um situation or that kind of element in that film which makes which will make us help us um realize or understand the narrative of the film so next up is variation so opposition of elements so repetition is kung ginaliwat liwat ang repetition variation is ginalain lain naman ang elements of film so This is a film still from the film Hero. It's an epic Chinese film where the variation is in the, uh, mostly seen in the design. So um, you would see that the film would start in a col- uh, color green and then the red and then the blue and then it ended the film ended with the color white um, to symbolize something. So um, these colors um um nag vary siya because it tends to send a message to the audience. So, um, example, nag-red ang colors sa amunin nga film, sa amunin nga film, because during that part of the scene, it's war. So, um, the director or the filmmaker um, decided to choose color green to symbolize war, to symbolize blood, to symbolize death of many people. So, um, variation would also come from the difference in terms of characters so there's a protagonist and antagonist so they vary in terms of beliefs in terms of choices um situations also would um also give you variation for example uh, a person nga uh, peaceful ang mind and then ginbutang mo siya sa place of um destruction this dystopia so how would how would that person react in that certain environment so that's variation next up is development So this is a film still from the Black Swan film. Um, it's the progression of elements in the film. So most of the time, and development can be seen in the characters' choices and decisions during the film. So development would tend to like parang ano siya, though ano blang tanong na nagagrow. Um, it would start from something, and tana most of the time the film would end. On something that the characters decided on, which signifies that person's development. So, development comes from the, an area of choices, of chances, of situations that you pick as a character or some scene during that uh, in in the film. So, development could be positive, could be negative, or um, positive in terms of if uh, the person made or the character made good choice. If negative, the man take nag wrong choice. Eh, na. So in the film Black Swan, um, you would know the development of the character, um, because um, the person uh, um, she decided to um, to be like this instead of that. So the ending um, somehow is almost tragic because of the choices of the character as well. So ayun na, may repetition na tayo, may variation, may function, and then may development. Next up is unity and disunity. So how the relationship is identified in the film, either woven or distorted. So um, unity and disunity um, really works, especially on conflicts uh, in film. Kay, kay, um, you would see sino ang character nga nagaapin sa main character, sino nga character ang nagaantagonize sa main character, sino nga character ang nagalabay lang tuod but would um, weave the story to go on so either united or this uh this united ang ang and some characters um it would always work because it helps you 
see the progress or the development of the film. So, butan uh, wala nang tawto na um example in this film Birdman, um this is a long take na film. So, you could see um a, a man nga nagalupad and then the main character. So, you would know if that uh, do they do they agree in the situation? Do they disagree in the situation? You would um uh, watch this film and you would see the relationship if it's really coherent or not. So, in terms of character building, because this a film is really interesting, interesting man. Um, next up, as a director, we should not be bounded by rules, but know them first, then make your style. So, um, as a filmmaker, among gina um, um, uh, experts in the industry would always tell you na um, there's no wala formula in teaching filmmaking, but experience would always be your mentor. So, um. Yeah, we should know, we should be aware of the rules, but as we go on, we should know how to play and bend the rules in order to really um, um, realize your style. So style is a particular way in which something is done, created, or performed. So style is some is like your signature. Yeah, it's very unique. Yeah, ikaw lang kabalo. And um, ikaw lang makaubra. So style would take a lot of time for you to like really develop or really practice. Kasi um, hindi man nga pagbugta mo, mayra ka na din style. No. Um, you should always um, immerse yourself in in the process of filmmaking for you to realize something, for you to realize or to appreciate the things that could help you in creating a good film. So, um, storytellers create their style from scratch, some from inspirations, some draw from life experiences. So, wala naman bal nila nga artist, gastil ang artist, wala tayo gakopya. Kung gakopya ka lang, tayo, um, ano lang, you're just imitating it. But if you're stealing something, you create something from it. So, you, you get this idea, you, you do something about it, and then you create an art. So, ano na siya. So, um, style is something uh, somehow hindi na siya matudlo, but um, because of your experiences, because of the things that you see or that inspires you around, you could get something from it and create your own. So, how do we know your style? By answering your whys. So, go back to your function. Uh, go back to the function. Like, what is the purpose? Why do you want this character to be like this? Why is your scenes are like that? Why um, your character's decision are just like this? Why are you presenting this kind of um, premise in the film? So if you answer your whys, um, maybe that's it. Um, you can create your own style. So <clears throat> in an artistic view, style is any distinctive and therefore recognizable way in which an act is performed or an artifact made or ought to be performed and made. So, um, mabalaan, some person, mabalaan, mabalaan sa everybody, nga, ah, this is um, someone's uh, style. Kete, amo ni iya ginobra per me, usually. Uh, for example, um, if you know the director, um, si, si, si Eric Mati, you would know his style because ting, iyang, usually iyang a film or genre films on action, um, on society, on poverty, um, always set in a in a um, poverty stricken areas. Um, it would always involve guns. It would always involve politics. So, ang uh, ang style ni Eric Mati, di ba? So, or for example, si, si Derek Anthony Hadawne would always talk about love. Um, would always talk about relationships, but then again, may ra- restro- retrospection within, so within character. Nga, uh, they, nga uh, nag-break sila because may mga internal decisions kali yung nagkakatabo. So may mga abon ang mga styles or narratives yung nagawa sa mga Filipino filmmakers, man. Um, um, aside from that, may international filmmakers like Wes Anderson, where you would know that that film is made by Wes Anderson because two-dimensional ang shot, uh, medyo linear, um, may um, hints of um, cool colors, mga muna. So, the damo klase um, elements that would um, identify nga, ah, muna siyang yung mga specific galing style. So, um, 
this is um some of the things that I learned. Uh, this is my creative process when I created Budigan Babayag na Glutaw. Um, it's one of the first film that I made after college. So, um, um, usually when we create um, film, we always have three um, three stages. Pre-production, production, and post-production. And then number four is distribution and marketing. So, um, distribution marketing, most of the time, yakatabo na siya if um, your film is really would want to have, like, ano ba lang, monetize magin siya. So, muna siya. So, how did it start? Um, in 2016, it was just a dream that I would want to make a film about a woman who floats in her bed. So, um, in 2016, also, ang film nga, ano ni ganyan, Mexican film, man. Um, it's an animated film nga, um, uh, the people, uh, nagakanto sila sa Afterlife, uh, Book of Life, I think, that's the title of the film. So, I I watched that film in Manila, and then, um, oh, doka nami, isang aesthetic sa film. Kita ko ang design, is very good. Though animated siya, pero te, pwede, basi, pwede siya ma-execute in, um, in a reality, nga set up, diba? Hindi, hindi siya sa drawing, pero set up lang siya. So, I draw inspiration from there, and then I imagine, what if I make a film about a person, nga galut tao, then, uh, it's just it's just no nag passing na balahaw. But I took it seriously. Nga, doka, I need to incubate this kind of story because number one, he'd love to the Ubra film. And then doka, doka, I want to go back to Bacolod and create something. Amuna. Next up, when I started to attend workshops in theater, writing, directing, inspirations came up all, all of a sudden, and finally I wrote the script. So three years after I um have that idea. So the develop ko palang idea ko in the within three years. So, muna siya. So, kami sa Ran Mayo. And then, this is uh, an excerpt of the script. So, you would see that this, it's fully legay non. Kay, um, I really want to, ma- to make my script balanga, to be more personal and to be more understood by the people that I work with. So, it's okay to create a script in our own language, guys. It's not, uh, it's okay nga, um, it's not necessary that we create our script in English, so long as you could understand your script. Ang translation niya, um, in the post-production, na, subtitles will, ano wala, dila ka na mag, pangayubulig sa translation if you need subtitles for your film. So I made the script for a month, and then af- after three years of incubating the idea. But the challenge there is, in Negros, we don't have established producers to help us find funding or to get a budget for our film. So what did we do? So ayun, um, in pre-production process, dila ako magapangita budget for the film. Mo. So I let I let people read my script and ask for possible collaboration. So we asked various um, people to help us in realizing the film. So um, many people read my script. Um, I got feedback and I asked them if you, they would want to help in creating the film. So, what happened was, um, many people, uh, uh, the people that uh, I wish to collaborate with, like the story. So, we found, we find ways on the budget and then I'm thankful that um, the city government of Sagay helped us in funding the film and as well as some producers, man, um, some artists who um, we got sponsorships to create the film. So, pre-production, um, ayun, aside from possible partnerships, we, break, we broke down the script, we worked with, worked with the actors for the character work, we found, uh, we looked for locations, we discussed the shots, what kinds of shots that we would want to create, and a lot more of thinking and revising to make it better. So, in breaking down the script, we always um, break down it in terms of the needs of the character, the design, the costume, the dialogue, the sounds, the music, everything. So, pre-production is um, ginafinish ta ang film sa pre-production pa lang. So, almost 50 to 75% of the film finish na dapat during pre-production because dira mo na tanan, gina, tanaw, mga nitty-gritty, the details, ang mga needs, gina rehearse mo, technical rehearsal, ga shot, um, ga camera testing ka mo, um, discuss ka mo nga sa amun yung parts and scene, ano klase nga angle ang gusto nyo, ano nga shot ang gusto nyo. Um, you would want to have a close-up shot and then you always go back to yourself. Nga, ma-close-up ka din yung shot. 
nga ama drone shot ka di. Ano na bala? Some other uh, big discuss nga baka anti nga ama di, nga kinanglan ko ang camera ko galupad sa mga scene man. Anong purpose in ihan? Um nga uh, malong shot ka di. Nga galakat siya pwede malang close up. Do mo na bala? So do you always um you always tend to ask so many questions during the pre-production and have it answered during the time for you to realize nga yeah, this is what you would want. This is the message of your film. So, medyo um, intellectual ka yung pre-production and plus you're looking for funds pa. So, dapat you have so many time to really do the pre-production. Kay kung wala, kung may magkulang lang, medyo maapektuhan ang mga next nga mga faces ng production. Ayun, this is the time, some of the photos that we, ano, um, had during the production. Um, we scouted this church. This is the Vito Church in in Sagay City, which is known for the Palapak tradition where um, people would go there and then literally, ginapalapak, gapalapak sila sa, san, sa wooden saint and um, dogin na butano na and that's it. So it's a part, um, somehow part of some film. And then, um, are, um, this is our character workman with the, with the, with the actor. So, gina, gina, gina workshop sila namon during the time. So, after pre-production, if everything is ready, everything is fine, so, um, aran according to schedule, nag-angot ng tanan, um, during the time that we shot Buding, uh, we had one week to do the production. So, meaning, the shot was done through scheduling by location. So, Oh, we scheduled the film. Um, tanan nga mga, abonin nga, example, um, tanan nga church nga scene, yun isa naman kaadlaw. Tanan nga beach nga scene, isa naman kaadlaw. So, muna siya. So, five days. One day um, was intended for, first day was intended for a final rehearsal of everything. We went to different locations, um, shot, practiced some scenes. Then, na muna. Bisan, during this shoot, gapangita dyan pang sponsorships. And, um, I don't know if I had a good sleep during the production because you always tend to think on everything. Kung chakto ay ng shots, may liliwatan mo laihan. When you review things, no, wala, damo, damo gaslagan sa utok, mga doka kiss, ah, ah, kinangla ko pag galing magtulog para buhas may hari, no, another nga shoot daw no, na siya. So this is some of the um, behind the scene photos of the, sh- uh, of, the uh, of the shooting in Sagay. So, um, may mga parts kaya tiniil kami yan para para makashoot kami sa dagat naman yung scene um, the first naman nga take was ang call time naman was 4am because we would want to get the sun sunrise that time so may mga kanilang pakita ang adlaw during that time as you can see in this photo um, in the first the upper left nga photo so um, muna gin, nakuha yun naman na sunrise and then some uh, muna, uh, this is our character Buding ang aring sa may fourth photo from left. Um, siya na. Um, um, I work with her, her um, um, guiding, coaching her kung anong ubrahon, kung ano ang dapat nga mood, emotion in that specific scene. So next up is post-production. So post-production is where we edit ang tanang ingredients ara na lutuo na siya. So there again involved editing, sound designing, musical score, VFX, coloring. So, damo-damo, classic, uh, mga things nga naga um, occur during post-production. So, we had one month to edit, sound design, and score the film. Because so, during the time, do ka mayara kami somehow pressure man on the deadline. Pero t- um, one month wasn't, was enough man to um, um, chase the deadline during that time. So, this is our naging entry siya namun for Sini Negrente. And after that, this is a film still from the film. So, um, this is a scene um, where ang ba- mag-asawa nagka-conflict, nag-inaway. Um, this is one of our characters, um, si Nunoy, um, looking for something during that scene. Um, this is the police officer during the time looking for Buding. Tingin investigate siya nga, nga nagalutaw si Buding. Amo na siya. And then, this is our poster. This is in collaboration with master artist Nuni Lucia Alvarado. So, you could see this is a painting. Hindi uh, pa colorized during the time. So, I asked him if 
pwede naman ubra ang poster for the film kay very do ka naga telling siya some stories sa amo niya so that's it that's the poster of the film so muna um luckily our film was um awarded the best picture in Cine Negra in 2019 and after that it went to various film festivals from around the Philippines so um it, we were invited in Cinemalaya um in the um exhibition section um when the, in the time during the pandemic nga online nag first time nag online ng Cinemalaya so amo na siya um this is um some of the photos during the awarding and um ayun um because of that um this is the things that i learned um when i was doing the film number one, in filmmaking you should always collaborate before during and after you made it so you gather people create a team and then you collaborate ideas both collaborate and collide ideas because kinang lantam kinananta sa mga agree and disagree on things <clears throat> to make sure ang vision sa film or ang vision mo as a filmmaker would be realized ano mga things sa kinanglan mo basi makabulig si amo nga person basi makabulig si amo nga cinematographer basi makabulig ni amo nga character ni amo nga actor mo na siya <clears throat> next up is tell regional stories though arito sa negros there are so many things that people should know about negros through telling stories through film Nung damo pag istorya, yan nga pwede ta makita, pwede ta ma-research, pwede ta ma-get around us and somehow make a film about it. And next up, it takes time and patience to really create a film. Kung hindi pa pagsimpuhan ba lang mag-ubra ka film, kisa pa dali, kisa hilaw, kisa do ka something is wrong. So dapat, when you make a film, you make sure nga nag-take ka some time mo, take your time, research, um, um, make people read your script um um consult the people if you're in the right track um do they have advice to improve your film muna siya next up amo na you always go back to your core you always answer your why nga ah nga ah nga ah why amo na siya you always ginablek balik muna siya muna question for you to really go back to your core bala nga ginao bra mo ni mo ni klase nga film mo kag kung ginao bra mo ni nga ah mo ni imo approach nga ah mo ni siyang imo nga gusto matabo Amo na siya. Next up, um, tips in directing. So, um, these are the things that I, uh, mga tips nga na-learn ko man in the working with the industry. So, number one is really observe people. Um, ang good nga character be is not, um, usually makita ito sa mainstream nga mga films or mga teleseries, cardboard nga character. Ano ba lang two-dimensional? Ha? Kita mo cardboard, dual lang gud yan. Amo lang yun ang iyagin obra all the time. So as a director, we should, or as a filmmaker, as a writer, we should know how to observe people. Know how they walk, they talk, they react on things. Kasi um, when you understand humanity, do ka dira ta makakirate interesting characters nga where the audience could relate into that character. So, be interested with their imagination, behavior, their needs, their wants, and their fears. Amo na siya. So, in making a character, we always, at least somehow, ako yung obra, aside from observing, I also talk to them um, for me to have some inspirations to create or build my own character in the film. <clears throat> Next up is answer the WH question. So, the what, the where, the why, the how, and the which. So, um, what? Um, ano ni? Where? Diin mo ni, diin mo ni na set. Why nga mo ni siya tanan? How? Paano mo na siya ubrahon? And which, anong, anong nga choices na kong piliyon para mag-progress ang storya? Amo na siya. So, basically, if you have this kind of questions, hindi kayo madula sa mo film. All, gabalik ka lang yun sa mga muni klase nga mga questions always. Next up is write stories, then visualize it. So, select a point of view, formulate your visual language. So, example, um, when you write a film about COVID, so, ano, ano nga, kay sino point of view ang gusto mo? Um, point of view ay hands audience, point of view sa isa ka-character, point of view sa isa ka-family, point of view sa isa ka-police, blah, blah, blah. And then, how do you execute it? Um, 
um, ano yung visual language? Would you want to make this a black and white film? Would you want to make is this a fictional or a fantastic nyo film? Would you want your approach to be horror? Ramon na siya. So you always ask things, damo-damo nga things, sino pang mangkot, masak o galing mo, to make sure nga ti, you have a direction in creating your own style, your own vision, your own film. Basically. Next up is to be clear with your intentions. Um, Amo na, din na sulod ang messaging. Um, ano klase nga message gusto mo yung sa audience mo? What are the things that you would want your audience to learn or to experience in your film? So, um, in terms of that, amo na ba na, you always, kaya totoo, then, ang, art, ang mayong artist, good artist, I believe, is the one who always knows his or her core. Anong purpose, anong intention niya always. Pabalaan mo gina kung clear sa iya or hindi, based on the output or on the film na ginapakita niya sa iyang audience. Next up is, when you create a film, you immerse to the world that you create. So, um, <clears throat> when you create a film, dapat ikaw mismo as a filmmaker, gasulod ka sa mo na klase nga world nga gusto mo brown. World building mo lang. So, dapat ara ka man da, when you put yourself into sa, a character's shoes, ano ni siya dapat ang yagin ubra, ano iya nga um, decisions, nga amo ni siya magiho, nga amo ni iya mannerism, tanan, gina-immerse mo yourself, gina-experience mo man ang world na gina-create mo in that process of filmmaking. Next up is read, read, read. Basa, get always. Basa, basa, basa script, basa libro, basa articles, anything that would inspire you. And I think as you can see, mga film posters, ni, I would suggest that as a filmmaker or as an aspiring filmmaker, you should watch and watch and watch more films. Kasi aside from being the experience as a mentor, you could always see the styles of various directors by watching so many, so many films. Either mainstream na, indie na, experimental na, film, documentary, anything. So, so sources of inspiration could be emotion, could be arts, could be book, could be spirituality, nature, music, everything, anything around you. Um, your senses, um, the guitar in the back of your door, the jacket that has never been worn, um, nga nakabuta na sa kilid na, what are the, anong mga stories I had sa mga things around you? Doon mo na siya. So, you, um, being curious is okay. Um, being a person who would ask questions would always be okay so long as it would inspire you to create something, to create a story, to create an art, to create a film, basically, especially, um, especially, um, right now, easy santanan because of the internet, um, tadamot, tadasig na maka-access information, and that tool is very helpful, Gid, to really upgrade our skills in filmmaking. Ayun. Don't do films because you want to win in film festivals. Do you and deliver the message that you would want to deliver as a filmmaker. So, more than anything else, um, more than winning in film festivals, you go back to, I mean, again, you, know, you always go back to your core. <clears throat> what is your purpose? What are your whys? Why you create something out of something? So, Again, the mind is our only escape. So, if you have questions later on, um, um, I would be happy to entertain them and answer them. And I hope that you keep telling your stories because the world is waiting to hear, to listen, and to watch it. So, thank you so much. And that's it for um, my presentation. Good. So, if you have questions, so, um, later na lang na. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you so much, Madam. Good to All right. So, that was really inspiring. And I'm sure you guys got questions for both our speakers. But as of the moment, we won't let Direct Mark go without us appreciating his efforts and um, his wisdom that he shared to us. And so we are giving him this certificate of appreciation, which reads, certificate of appreciation is proudly presented to 
Mark Raymond Garcia for imparting his invaluable knowledge and field of expertise as keynote speaker with the topic Lessons and Experiences in Film Directing during the Bacolod Titan High School ICT Month Celebration 2022 with the theme Click Optimizing ICT Literacy and Skills held on January 21, 2022, given this 21st day of January 2022 via Restream. Signed by our ICT TLE Subject Area Coordinator, Mr. Roland Emilio, our Student Development Office Head, Ms. Maureen Mejeca, and our School Principal, Engineer Philip Corpina. Let's take this moment to have a little photo op in three, two, one, smile. Much, Derek Mark. Thank you also to our school heads. This time we would like to call back to join with us, um, Coach Nikolai. This is the moment that our guest speakers are going <coughs> to answer all your queries. Welcome to our open forum session. And for those who are just joining us this moment, um, this is Click Optimizing ICT Literacy and Skills. And today, two marvelous and incredible guest speakers shared to us about their wisdom and field of expertise. First is Coach Nikolai, who talked about social media marketing. And we have Coach Mark, who shared lessons and experiences in film directing. So, people of the world, those friends of us, in youtube and facebook this is the time oh by the way we also collected questions during the registration process so we have them on hand yep. uh, before we let our guest speakers answer may i ask them for uh, are you acquainted in any way direct mark and coach nicolai are you acquainted? Oh, ngayon lang. Oh, yoy. Okay. Hello. Coach Nikolai, direct Mark. Direct Mark. It's Hello. Coach Nikolai. Uh, direct, I'll try to watch. I was taking notes while, because I was working, but I was taking notes. I'll try to watch your film. Congrats. Yes. Thank you. Very, <laughs> you Mark. Coach Nico, uh, you guys follow Coach Nico on all his social media platforms, okay? <laughs> So, yeah, we have our first question for Coach Nico, this one. How would you describe the current state of social media in terms of your field of expertise? Wow. Any tips for someone trying to get themselves out there with marketing by a Bacolod Taitung High School grade 11 student? Um, well, um, what I like is this is the best. Uh, era right now in terms of social media and online where everyone uh, is really into online even if people who don't have a choice they have to go online now, right? so it's the greatest era actually to go into social media marketing so in terms of my expertise uh, i think i mentioned this a while ago like uh, try to first choose which platform you really want to focus on so if it's facebook um really Put your energy on uh, putting out your content, and uh, I think uh, Direct mentioned this about you learning how to collaborate with people so that you can grow your presence either on Facebook, on uh, Instagram, wherever. But me specifically, it's where I, where how I grew is all on Facebook long because I just decided on one because I said Karina, about you have a taste of everything, but I don't want you to be confused. Focus on where your energy is, which is for me just Facebook. I grew it there and then eventually try to focus on other platforms like TikTok and other um, platforms. So I hope that helps you. Thank you, Coach Nikolai. Um, Derek, uh, Mark, this other one is for you. Was there anyone who doubted you or convinced you that this professional path is unpredictable such as the saying starving artist 
And if so, how did you overcome these doubts? That's one, uh, a question from one of our grade 10 students. Well, actually, um, doubt is everywhere, Mundi, um, on my part, on my experience. Um, with all, you could not please everybody. But again, you always go back to your core. Na, ano ga, what's your purpose in doing this kind of thing? Because um, until then, just create your art until you build your audience, you build your group. Diba? Uh, um, when we create something, um, it would always be hard to start. Kasi birthing pains mo na siya as an artist, diba? as a starving artist. But um, you always have the chance to like, go back to yourself and then realize things. It's the thing that someone told, uh, ang negative thought that, that the person told you about is, is it really real? Um, is it really um, um, toad na um, within yourself? If it's toad, what are the things that you would want to do to correct it? So if it's not, padayon lang eh. You always, um, you always never um, doubt yourself first. Kaya kung ikaw mismo, you yourself would doubt you. Look at it, how would you go on if you don't have that kind of self-reliance but on yourself? So tip guys, um, surround yourself with the creative people. Surround yourself with people who would you would know nga is willing to collaborate. <clears throat> Bisan hindi sila artist or artist man be for um, let's just say. <clears throat> and I think um, if you surround yourself with um, people who believes in your talent and your skill, then you could create something that would really speak some about your art, about your film. Thank you so much, Direk. Ayon. Take criticisms assertively, but don't ever doubt yourself. Okay, so we have another one um, for Coach Nikolai. What is the loudest social media app today that we can guarantee and attract more audience or buyers? Okay, uh, I love this question. Uh, first of all, there's no guarantee uh, in anything. It still requires you to put in the work but um the best place to start is as i answered in my presentation is TikTok. if you want to grow your audience however at the end of the day if your audience is not there and um you're continuing to put content baka sayang lang, diba? but again just to answer that TikTok would be a best way to start to build your audience and start to produce because i've seen so many people build their business small business long because they were able to get a big following and from influencer they got offers to be actors of film just because they have big following diba? and because uh mark, having attention will definitely attract um businesses small businesses even filmmakers because they can see that this person is a marketing juggernaut everything he posts creates attraction uh so TikTok is a way to start because that's where the audience is right now all right thank you coach nicolai TikTok, you guys <laughs> but the guarantee is not guaranteed okay yeah. that's what coach nico said you need to work for it put in the work okay and make sure you're enjoying yourself doing that all right so for direct mark another one what was the most remarkable and unforgettable movie you ever produced from one teacher in our school. <clears throat> Ayan, I'm remarkable and unforgettable. I think um the thing the film that I made during the pandemic, um my recent film. No, uh, it's the title was Nawong, um the new phases of dreams and mysteries. So because I think it's a remarkable and unforgettable film because for one, I made it during the lock lockdown, um enhanced community quarantine. So. Um, the ru usual routine in the filmmaking process was really like 180 degrees. So um, um, my people that I used to collaborate with are not with me in Sagay. I was in Sagay during the time that I shot this film. So what I w made, I tend, what I did was I collaborated with my neighbors. I collaborated with the young people in my community. So it was granular in lockdown during the time. So um, during the time I made my film with people who is first time to have to have to, to undergo a filmmaking process, first time to act, first time to do this, first time to do that. So 
it was my it was my opportunity for me to like teach them um the things that i learned in the industry and then um um so far it was it went good um i i had so many anxieties during the time because aside from the lockdown itself mera bala things or thoughts that um um that mga negative thoughts because of isolation because of the things that happening but um those thoughts were translated into something creative like filmmaking so um i shared it shared it with my community and then um um my goal was just to create something uh, in the middle of the lockdown lang because the um ncca um produced the film so just it was just that um just want to create a compelling story about the pandemic about my experience in pandemic so that film wala ko nang expect nga that would go to more film festivals and it was my first film that um went internationally so it's unforgettable and a remarkable film for me and nakaka ko <laughs> like it's very much a direct mark i have only seen the trailer and i am already so intrigued with it uh we wish to watch your film so where can we get it where can we like um Yeah, um see. the film the film Budding is in Vidsi. Um it's an it's an online streaming platform. Um you could watch the film there for free. So sa Vidsi it's V I D D S E E. So um dire na siya or to siya. Um ang nawong is is still yet to be released publicly because um it's still um roaming around um it has um may mga film festivals pa na upcoming um and i hope that um maka join kami sa mga programming so may mga film so sa mga may mga film festivals so that's it pero um we plan to um after the campaign for the wall um i think um um we want to make it um we post na maybe in youtube in our youtube account so Um, we're just gonna update in our page. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Derek. Okay, so you guys follow yeah. Derek Mark as well. Okay, now we proceed yeah. for Coach Nikolai. How to build a customer base in social media? Hmm. Yes. Uh, so if you want to build a solid customer base, uh, first is focus on deciding what product you will sell. Iba. So. Once you decided you what product you want to sell and build a customer base, um, this first, try to capture first your area where you can easily ship this product. So I was just thinking right now when I saw this question is kung food or cakes or whatever na something that you can eat. The fastest way is conquer your area. So for me, I'm based in Antipolo now. What I did was when I was trying to build a solid customer base. Dito lang ako focus to sell the products in that area. And then I created my own Facebook page where it just sells products. So if you'll follow me on Facebook, it's not obvious that I'm selling products because I have a dedicated page where I sell my products, where I build my customer base. So there. All right. Thank you so much, Coach Nikolai. Um, we have one more uh, from Juliana Hasildo. Do we really need to take formal education to start filmmaking? This is for direct mark, I believe. Um, to be honest, to be straightforward with it, guys, I was I don't have a course I can take for film, but I just had subjects when I was in college. But may mga filmmakers kung makilala nga didn't have the course or like the formal education for filmmaking, but they just learn to collaborate with people who knows how to do it so again experience is always a mentor when it comes to filmmaking get the right formula to teach what is a good film what is a bad film so again you always surround yourself with creative or interested people say more craft and then start from it um start from writing stories and then make people read Um, and then dira lang dira and watch films kasi ang wala na biya ko my experience was just sitting there sitting in my laptop watching films and then learn from it analyze this and that um, and make my own that's it thank you direct mark meron pa pong follow up question direct mark do you do storyboarding or just rely on your imagination 
until you can visualize <laughs> during production. Um, storyboarding is really, really important in the fil- in filmmaking process. Um, though hindi ka kabalo, ako hindi ka kabalo mag-draw, um, what do I do is, bisan stick lang ang ginadraw mo for so long as it like hints the vision that you would want for your film. It's really important for you guys to visualize every shot, every details, every color, every character, every movement, everything that's happening in a frame. Um, you should have keen details of it because it affects the kind of message you want to send to your audience. So storyboardings, br- breakdown of script, shot list, when you, where you um, list the kinds of shots you would want in the specific scene, everything. Tanan your possible ways on breaking down the script, you do it because if you don't, um, you might compromise the vision of the film. And thank you so much, Direct Moore. At merong pahabol na comment, but I don't think it's a question. It says, Sir Mark, <laughs> hope you can also give another talk for our Titan Theater Guild. That's from our head of the Student Development Office, Ms. Maureen. Ayun, hopefully. Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, uh, do we have more questions for our amazing guest speakers? All good. One left. All right. So before we let you go, <laughs> and before we see you um, again, someone and somewhere, we would like to ask. All right. So, do you ever um, wait? How can we actually optimize social media marketing in terms of I the use of ICT there, and then? How can we actually optimize our lessons and experiences and counterfeiting when we are using ICT? Those are going to be our final questions for the both of you. So, sinong mauuna? Coach Nico. So, direct. Direct, sorry. Naunahan. Go direct. Ako? Wala? Yes, po. <laughs> Oh, okay. Kami si universe ng question. Um, 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 well, I think social media is very, it's a good tool to really tell your stories. Um, us, uh, in, in our perspective as a filmmaker, it's really, really important for us to engage our audience in social media. For us to have an audience, to find our audience, to find our niche. In, uh, for our stories. So not all the time, everybody would want to, re- to watch and see your film, diba? Um And through social media, I believe um, filmmakers as the avenue or the platform to tell their stories to a bigger audience, to a, bigger, uh, to a wider reach. So I think ICT is really, really important for us to create good content and for us to um really get um be our voice be heard the message be um spread to everybody um through our art and i hope and i believe that we always um make sure that the content that we do is something that would make be, people be inspired or act on something not just more than entertainment itself i mean it's given um you will be entertained if we get to see these kinds of contents. But I hope and I aspire that we always create content that would make people do something about it, do um, inspire people to make a collective action for this, for the world to be a better place. So I hope, guys, especially the Gen Z right now, grabi ka techie, grabi ka technologically literate on the things um, this, uh, that we use right now, especially if we're in the pandemic, most of the time, virtual lang atun nga, interaction. I hope we use it responsibly and use it as a tool to make people be inspired and do something on the things and the problems and the issues of the world. So, thank you. Love it. Thank you, Direct Corona. <laughs> you uh, how about Sir Nico? Okay, I think uh, direct covered everything. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, I think yeah, yeah, social media's impact to uh, our whole life uh, is the biggest um, contributor 
to our life to progress. Um, uh, it is the basic need already for everyone just to buy and to even buy their basic needs. Grocery, <laughs> what is good for to, to listen. So um, through ICT, um, social media is definitely, uh, it's already part of your routine in life. And uh, if you are still not um, into social media or into online, now is the time, and I hope after listening to both of us, um, you will make a decision to really integrate social media in your life and being responsible about it. Because we see a lot of people who are very impacted by mental health. You know, this is not an issue, I think, in our timely direct or even the older generation. But now is the biggest time. So try to also surround yourself with the right social media, you know, influencers, educators, filmmakers to really uh, be more uh, excited to go into this social media world. Ayon. Thank you so much, Coach Nicolai. Um, for our two guest speakers, we really, really appreciate you. Um, thank you for accepting our invitation. And as you can see on the comments, our student body and our faculty family, they're really very um, inspired at the moment. And that's because of the two of you. So thank you so much, Coach Nicolai and Derek Moore. Uh, in fact, <laughs> uh, we will have students who will give their insights uh, about the talks that Coach Nicolai and Derek Mark shared to us this morning. And let us start with our first grade 10 student, Ms. Camille Maris Catalogo. Good morning, everyone. First and foremost, I am honored and delighted to be part of this webinar. Based on the talk by Sir Nicolai, social media marketing is indeed significant. Why? Social media is becoming one of the most important components of digital marketing, with the ability to reach millions of customers all over the world. It helps you connect with customers, raise brand awareness, and increase leads and sales. From Sir Nicolai's talk, we learn topics such as online strategies. We can inform, educate, and entertain with content, content strategy. We can be successful if we know the ways to social media. We gain a lot from this talk, including lessons, tips, and advice on social media marketing. We should keep in mind that marketing is a generous act to serve their goals, as Sir Nicolai said. We are grateful for the opportunity to learn from your enlightening and insightful talk, Sir Nicolai Ramos. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Marie. This time, let's listen to our second student who will give her insight. And let's welcome Yaris Kuyoka of Great Den. Good day, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Mr. Garcia for that substantial talk. I am truly honored, grateful for this opportunity to learn from you. With this, I would like to share some insights on the text. According to Sir Mark, when you create stories, you always want to go beyond the surface. We go beyond the literal, and we dig deeper towards the message. For me, we deepen our connection with our work. We pay attention to elements that exist beneath the surface of the things we want to portray. With this, the elements that are Mark included in our talk are truly a significant aspect in creating films that would inspire us, make us feel something, and most importantly, make us realize and understand the narrative of the film we're watching. I would also like to thank Sir Mark for the lessons and advice on ways to create a film that is authentic, unique, and a film that can connect to the audience on a deeper level. But of course, we should always know our core and our intentions. As what Sir Mark said, Taitungians, may this talk allow you to create, inspire, and make the world a better place. That would be all once again. A big thank you to Mr. Mark Garcia for that insightful talk. We have learned a lot. Appreciate your time and effort to enlighten us on this topic. All right. Thank you so much, Yuris. Once again, thank you, Camille and Yuris, our great students, I mean, great 10 students, 
of Bacolod Titan High School for giving those insights. And indeed, thank you so much, Coach Nicolai Ramos and Direct Mark Garcia for sharing your time, your wisdom, and your expertise with us this morning. And so that is almost the end of our program. But before that, we would like to have our school principal, no other than Engineer Philip Corpina, for his closing remarks. First of all, I would like to congratulate the ICT CLE area headed by Sir Roland Leonilio and the Student Council organization for coming up with, <clears throat> with another inno innovation that raises the bar for everyone. While we continuously try to be better and responsible citizens, especially in today's setting, <coughs> wherein we are surrounded with technology and the social media, we do not forget that these are tools. So these tools will continue to be tools and not as end in themselves. And as tools, we use them wisely and properly to achieve our goals. Thank you to our guest speakers for sharing with us your thoughts and insights. <clears throat> Sir Nikolai, for talking about social media marketing. And Direct Mark Garcia for sharing with us lessons and experiences in film directing. We truly learned a lot and we hope to implement them in our next projects. We are all aware <coughs> how the ICT takes the center stage these past months. And as we cruise in this pandemic, and it will continue to be a major part of our curriculum. We look forward to having more productive activities as we see more creative <coughs> and innovative ideas coming from all fronts and the fun of collaborating with others. Again, thank you very much and I wish everyone an enjoyable weekend. Morning. Thank you so much, Engineer Filler. And that's it, guys. What a wrap, right? This has been Click Optimizing ICT Skills and Literacy. And uh, we would just like to thank you so much for being with us all throughout our session this morning. Thank you for clicking your way through here. And hopefully uh, you, you learned a lot of lessons from us and you will apply them in real life. Let's all together become responsible and better digital citizens. That's it. Let's have our alma mater song. <laughs>